I'm delighted to say that I have got Maureen Tangai, hopefully um, she can correct me if I'm wrong anyway, I'm saying her name correctly. Uh, she's the author of The Visual Detox and How to Consume Media Without Letting It Consume You. So Maureen, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Have I said your name correctly? <laughs> You said perfectly, and it's a total yes. joy. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us today. Let's just go straight into it. Um, your book, The Visual Deta Detox, what inspired you to write it? So I think I've been in the art world for the past 15 years, and what shocked me is to realize that the 10,000 images you consume daily, there's only 1% of it that is art. So your 99% are actually commercial imagery. And when we know that commercial imagery is built to make you dissatisfied with life and pushing you to consume more, and that art ultimately is a total opposite, you, it increases your mental health, happiness, and, and um, imagination, creativity. I just felt really shocked by it, and I just... I wanted to dive in and ultimately understand who owns the visuals we consume daily. How can we make a difference? How can we participate in it? How can we basically change that? And do you feel like in writing the book, you found some answers? I mean, because they're big questions. Yes, that, is, <laughs> that is a hopeful thing is the first part is awareness. And I'm, unfortunately for the awareness part, you would dive in onto a lot of hard facts. Like 2050, 75% of the images you can have a look at will be generated by AI. A lot of facts are overwhelming. Number two is the fact that actually this is positive because 65% of us are visual learners. So you will be in a place that you'll be learning visually how to basically be in dialogue with the visual environment and world you in. Number three is how do you participate? And yes, to your question, there's loads of ways in which you can participate and make sure that this is changing from the type of um, contents you'll be following, endorsing um, on your digital channels, from the brands that ultimately you'll be buying from and what kind of visual storytelling or visual representation they'll be endorsing up to ultimately ways in which you can change what you see on your streets. Excellent. And um, you talk about sort of visual, you're talking about visuals, visual excess. Um, you're saying there's a positive there in that many people, a majority of people are visual learners. Um, yet we've got this in your book. This is the average person, as you just mentioned, sees about 10,000 commercial vi uh, visuals in one day. And that's massive. And then obviously there's the classic phrase of a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, and yeah, an individual, or according to your research, an individual can only process about 1% of all of that in visual information that we're receiving. So yeah. um, wh where does it leave us? What, what does this all mean for us? So I think the answer is, as you, as you can say it yourself, like 10,000 is just too much. It's also a difference in how you consume visuals versus words. So the words we currently are changing, it travels to the brain much slower than visuals. And ultimately, visuals will be going to your primitive side of your brain, the amygdala. This is very much how you respond on affect, your kind of fight and flight response. And so you're actually not aware how much visuals are shaping you was the words we're exchanging, although we remember less of it, we are much more aware that this is having an impact on us. And that's also the reason I want and I'm pushing for visual education and visual awareness because they, all of those images, like the ones that you've kind of walked on on your way to commute to work at the radio this morning, are shaping you, but actually you're a lot less respect and receptive of that manipulation. And, and that manipulation is important to understand. Excellent. And um, you, I mean, is there some sort of relationship then about being aware, mindfulness, you know, the concept of mindfulness, being aware of what you're consuming or what's around you, getting more in touch with yourself and with your surroundings to have, I suppose, more choice in what you're consuming? Yeah, it all starts with critical thinking. It's the same way in my head with how do you make sure that you do not get manipulated with constant information mm -hmm. where you just start saying that actually images have an impact on you and you just start putting distance with them. You don't just take it as a truth. Um, we tend to trust too much the images that we see and we tend to think this is it. This is a truth, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just acknowledging that this is not a truth. It's an angle. As you know, in journalism, when you're a journalist, you're shooting 200 pictures. That image that you're going to shoot out of the 200, that is your opinion. That is an angle. So constantly training to ultimately looking at it with visual critical thinking. Excellent. And you also mentioned um, the final question here, really, um, or final deep question anyway, about uh, detoxing, sort of visually detoxing. Could you break that down for us a little bit? 
Yes. And those can be like little steps to take. So one out of two of us are living in cities. So it's not like you could just take a, you know, a ride to the seaside anytime soon. Um, so you could just be changing the streets that you're on. Like on, I live in London. Instead of taking your region street to Oxford street, you could be choosing to take the back streets, for instance, on your way to work or as you're dropping the, 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 the kids off school. I think being mindful of the fact that Right now, most of your visual environment is your laptop, your TV, your phone, and your commute to work, which is right now most of the advertising world kind of managing this. So again, trying to think of the time that you spent on this, trying to think of the amounts of images you see on it and how you can ultimately reduce it. Um, and same with your commute to work. Nice. And obviously people can get their hands on your book. Also, yeah. you've been known to do some TEDx talks, so I presume you can be found on YouTube. Ironically, can anyone find you on Instagram? Yes, well, you can find me everywhere. With moderation is obviously everything that is in the book and, and regulation. And again, this is something that is hopeful. I, I feel there's many ways in which we can ultimately change it. Uh, something to leave you with is... We are about to double again the amount of images we're going to see over the coming years. So it's a real, real timely questions to be thinking about um, if we want to make sure that we are creating a visual environment that is suiting to us a lot more. I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to run us through that. I know that you've got a busy day ahead of you. So go and enjoy the rest of your day. And everyone can find the book on the TRE uh, bookshop. It's called The Visual Detox, and it delves into how to consume media without letting it consume you. Marina, thank you so much for joining us. Total pleasure. Thank you.